priorities because the research priorities are not being policed yes no exactly are about being able to find things and share things um effectively and and i think the second piece uh, that from the research infrastructure's point which i wasn't quite sure came across was that um research infrastructures will will co-produce or engage with um eosc if it's if it offers convenience yes so if it's easier to uh to to do things through eosc than not and that sense of convenience hasn't come across i think yeah in the uh, syria pr uh, priorities um so it's kind of going over the same sort of ground that we know we need identifiers we need metadata we need love and peace so we know about those things but the sense of and it has to be um tractable and to to do within our research infrastructures it has to really respect the legacy of those research infrastructures and also what yeah. they are doing as first class contributors and it has to be convenient. I, yeah. I, I do sometimes feel as if that isn't really there, Sarah. No, 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 I um, completely <laughs> agree with you. Um, so usability um, is something that, you know, really matters to me. So it's, it's a case of actually understanding how this should work for somebody. And I think a lot of the underlying notions are a little bit flawed. You know, it's, it's more difficult sometimes like like your example that you gave you told to go and register on the portal but what does that actually mean what does it do you go and you find a service and you click because you know maybe you're interested but it kind of goes to nowhere and that can't happen if because you you quickly lose credibility with research communities if they appointed to something and either they can't log in or it doesn't work or it's you know not obvious and not clear and isn't useful they won't come back um so we have to make sure that it you know it's convenient and works in the way that research infrastructures would need does anyone else have comments here about the the shria priorities things that maybe you know did it seem appropriate overall to you or very quiet i know everyone's quiet maybe everyone needs to introduce themselves <laughs> <laughs> i want all the videos on <laughs> yeah uh, i could also say that i'm really pro um expanding to beyond data uh sarah yeah uh, and, and what are the considerations that you are taking into cons in, in, into account for instance is what you mentioned it's important uh, there was some uncertainty regarding the contribution to the association, but uh, now things are more clear. Uh, uh, the estimation is that the full membership uh, cost or fee is 10,000 uh, euros and the participation, the fee as observer is 2,000 um, euros, if I am not mistaken. Uh, this is information that, uh, of course, the research infrastructure needs to know, and uh, the, the the views or to, to to share with you the your views regarding that it is important. So I understand that from your your point of view, this is a problem for the infrastructures. The financial contribution to the association is a problem for the for some of the infrastructures. Uh, Claudia, it, it is it, well, it's um. Uh, one fee fit all is really a very uh, not a very good approach, because for some infrastructures, ten thousand euros is nothing. For Instruct, ten thousand euros is a fifth of what the whole of Portugal pays uh, for being a member of Instruct. Then you you are asking for this specific area that we uh, give a fifth of the contribution of one of the member countries. This is, for other infrastructure, is a minuscule amount. For Instruct, it's a huge amount. Then this is an issue. Then if we are going to, and you are in our council, Inma, and you know, that if we are going to convince the council that this is the right use of resources, will be to taking funds away from giving scientists access to our infrastructure. Then this is a very difficult decision. And I know it's a, it's a pity to have to, waste time in a way to uh, discuss money. Uh, but uh, for in our situation, this is a crucial point. 
maybe Ima, I can I can elucidate a little bit. Uh, first of all, as Ima said, there is the observer uh, status, which is much cheaper than uh, the other one. The, the prices, by the way, have not been fixed yet formally. Huh? This is indications, but I think they are good indications. Uh, and 2,000 is much smaller than, than 10. The only thing is you cannot vote. But if you have 100 people or 100 parties voting, your one vote doesn't make a, a real difference. For the rest, you can have all access to everything the association uh, is doing. That's one remark. Then there is a, a question from Paul, whether the governance of the system is not confusing. No, it's not. The association will have a general assembly. And as it is written in the statutes, you can download the statutes from the EOS uh, 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 Secretariat website. It's very clear that this uh, 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 governance uh, structure, that the General Assembly is the uh, ultimate body and not the partnership board. The partnership board is to evaluate the partnership and to, to steer in the long term uh, where it is going and to, to uh, well, you could call it an advisory group. But of, of course, if in the partnership board, the commission says A, we should take A into account. But I do not want to be talking all the time because there's two hands raised, one from Lupert and one from Paul. I don't see, ah, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, I can just perhaps just, just comment. I think that, that makes it a little bit clearer. Um, having run an ASBL for 10 years, um, the, the statutes and the voting and the, the governance is, is quite complicated. But if you have like an advisory board, that makes perfect sense. Um, again, just to go on, on the membership levels, Membership levels are always difficult to set. Um, in our association, we, we, we set them depending on the membership um, benefits. So we have some members that pay more, but they get more benefit. So, you know, that's a matter of, of discussion. Wherever this is fine tuning them, later, Paul. Yeah, exactly. Wherever you set them, somebody's going to complain. So yep. you need to have that, you know, in mind. But having observer state at, at a lower fee, that's a, that's a really good idea. Okay, Rupert. Hi. Uh, good morning, Ima. Good morning, everybody. Um, if, morning. if I may, so I, I, I very much uh, agree to, to what uh, the concerns Claudia has raised. I can confirm that um, we have observed and, and received input from various uh, research infrastructures, in particular the, the ERICs and NS fees, that uh, there is some concerns around, uh, around the membership fees. And, uh, and at this time, um, since they many of them need to to run their decision and, and their application through a council or uh, some some form of similar board, um, it might be very complicated discussions to assure to that that would prevent a fast uptake. And and I think um, here, in, in particular in the in the S3 context, and uh, we we uh, we would we would like to encourage. Um, a rapid uptake of, of the research infrastructure to make sure that they feel part of the governance, that they feel part of being the process uh, of the process to shape the, the strategic research and innovation agenda. And, and with that identification, really are also um, actively uh, realize they are part of EOS and, and, and that they can shape EOS. I think that's a, that's a hurdle. That's, a, that, that's something that we need to realize. Um, I fully understand there is constraints uh, around around the membership fees, how they can be organized. And, and Carol has, I think Carol and, and team, they are uh, bending this to the extreme already. Uh, but at the same time, we need to realize uh, to make sure we have rapid uptake of the research infrastructures who to a large extent um, bring on board the, the data and many of the, the services around the, the different data qualities. Um, that are important for EASC, um, that, that can be that can be a concern. That's uh, that's my input here. Rupert, if I may add to that, I fully agree with what you said. Uh, I hope that uh, several of the individuals involved in the research infrastructures are uh, present in the working groups, and the working groups have been very active in providing the input for the uh, Sharia. So I hope through that mechanism that a lot of what is, let's say, uh, seen by, wanted by, produced by the research infrastructures is also included, uh, and their vision is also included in the Sharia in that way. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, I see a question. I see M uh, Nicholas Pate, that is uh, the director of EMBRC, and uh, he mentioned that he, they have the same problem with the fees. Uh, so it is uh, something that we have to take into consideration. 
Uh, I see Claudia asking me a question for him. Do you think that the information we receive is enough for our council to take an informed decision? Well, it is, it is uh, difficult uh, to say. We are uh, trying to, to, to build uh, this partnership uh, this, uh, the, and, uh, and there are uncertainties that we have to, to deal with. Uh, the process for joining the organization is not, uh, is not closed. We are going to have a first round of, uh, of uh, organization joining now and we will have opportunities to join in, in, in other moments. Uh, I think that uh, we need, and in this sense, I think it's very important the, the, the role of the governance board representative of the, of the different uh, member states and associate countries uh, to, 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 to bring the benefits and the interests of the research infrastructure to join in the, the EOSC. If uh, the EOSC is not a, a big organization re gathering the interest and the, and the and, the, and all the organizations uh, of Europe uh, just uh, couldn't uh, fly. We, we need to have, for construction of, of um, the cloud, we need to have everybody, every organization inside, if possible. And the resistance factors are very important to join. It's true that uh, for the process, but for the rigid process of the decision making in the Council of the Resistance Infrastructure, maybe it's not uh, mature enough uh, as uh, for, for presenting the, the case and asking for the, the support. But it's something that we have to do because it is something that we need. We need infrastructures uh, joining EOSC and, and, uh, and supporting the construction of EOSC. Some uh, other comments, Jennifer, Edmund? For do you want to take the floor, Jennifer? Um, sure, I'm, I'm happy to, to just comment on, on what I've put in the chat. I think it's sometimes easier to, to put them into the written record. Um, I just would like to agree with the comment that um, I also will be bringing the question of EOSC uh, Association membership to my General Assembly. And I would hope that by the time that meeting happens in a few weeks, I will have to be able to say, it will cost us this, we will get this. Um, it's, 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 it's difficult for us to go forward with membership without full clarity there. Um, second, I would say in terms of the um, structure of the partnership, again, it's unfortunately, it's unfortunate that the, the voices of organizations like ours is, um, it's, it's a pay to play model, unfortunately. And I, 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 I realize that there will be costs and they have to be, they have to be defrayed and I'm not being naive, but I also know that within the arts and humanities, um, access to funding, project funding um, is, is not the norm. And that I would see this as a, a, a possible place where the voices that are already somewhat marginalized can become more so. So I would raise that risk um, as, a, as a possibility. And then finally, I would say from a, an S3 research infrastructure landmark position, um, you know, we are seeing a lot of what we're doing now pivot to support the EOSC, to support our communities to participate in the EOSC. And we can see currently we're working very hard with the, the, the cluster partners in shock to build some very important components and enablers that, that simply will not be a part of the, the central EOSC. Um, and those enablers will have to be maintained from our central funds. So really we are putting significant resources of our own into making the EOSC possible for our community. And yet also um, we will be facing the same fees for the association participation. So again, I, I think that there will be ways in that we'll in which that will potentially be defrayed, but there's no guarantees. And that's another discussion that we will have to have both internally in our senior management committee and also with our general assembly. And I know these questions will be asked and I'm not sure that I have answers uh, that I would like. So I just put those uh, forward to the, um, to, the, to the kind of the group assembled here as, as considerations. Again, they may apply to others or they may be distinct to our, our position. Thank you, thank you. If I, if I may add uh, yes, to what Jennifer said, I, 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 I agree and I feel for her from, from her side, but in a way, experimental research infrastructures. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, some of us that have actual, you know, hands-on experiments. 
to do in our, in our infrastructures. Those sort of views has not been very prevalent in the discussion of EOSC. For totally understandable reasons, most of the setup in training and in general discussion of, the, of EOSC has come towards the more virtual infrastructures more e-infrastructures, which is understandable, but it doesn't really represent the reality of the more hands-on experimental infrastructure, which has a very different requirement for, uh, for the cloud. Then um, this is an issue that is very important for us to be represented, but um, we, we will be very sad not to be able to be represented, but um, the situation is uh, financially is very difficult. Have you, have you had opportunity to discuss about that in the context of the clusters? Uh, no, no specifically about the association. We have tried to bring up uh, the point of view of the more uh, um, hands-on infrastructures to our life science uh, cluster, of course, uh, but obviously the, the, the weight of the uh, e-infrastructures in, is, is, is a lot higher and also the, the, how, how the, the cluster projects were um, written, uh, then it's difficult for us to, to bring our point of view there as well, in a way we are a, a, a minority. Then maybe uh, Nicolas can also add to, to, to our our point of view here in, within the life science. Do you want to uh, take it off? Yes, I uh, just wanted to let you give me the chance. Um, thank you, Claudia. I completely agree. I mean, uh, I, I couldn't really, there's nothing really for me to add to that uh, other than to say that I think the potential of uh, having the joining as clusters is very interesting. We sit in the same situation as, as Instruct in that we are much more hands-on experiments and therefore, you know, such a big investment would require a lot of thinking because there's a lot of investment, a lot of projects popping up now that require funding. Um, and it becomes a bigger and bigger drain on our very limited budgets. So, um, us not being a, a data-driven research infrastructure, I think it would be very difficult to justify the big cost of membership. However, um, being able to participate through our clusters where there is a broader representation of our general interest would be very much of interest. And I think for us, a much more interesting model to pursue. Uh, Ima, there are different yes. hands raised, but before you give them the floor, may maybe I can add to this that there is, uh, uh, as far as I know, most of the research infrastructures are meant by men and women coming from universities, or researchers from universities. So if you have your university join the association through that, you can also be uh, part of the discussion and involved in the uh, association's activities. So it's not only the clusters uh, or the research infrastructures itself, if they're very poor, Think about your own university, which you're a member of, and see to it that that university becomes a member and that you represent your university. Uh, I, will, I, I would like to add that, that uh, there is a request that uh, for joining the association, you need to have a legal status. So yeah, the, the university has. has. The university has. No, 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 not regarding your question regarding Nicolas. So for the clusters to join, you need to establish some uh, kind sure. of okay. uh, yeah. agreement. For the representation for, for one of you representing the cluster, because it's a requirement that uh, for joining you have you need to have legal status, and it's something that you have you need to discuss in the in the clusters uh, in, in in this context. I have Paul and Rupert that I don't know if it is a, the same hand that was already uh, up. Yes, yeah, okay. I, I couldn't get my hand down, so forget about me. <laughs> okay, so Rupert, you want to add yeah. something? Yeah, I, in my, I was I was actually making the same comment about, about the legal status uh, of, of the SV clusters or of, of some of the umbrella um, organizations. So the SV cluster projects right now don't have any, any legal status as far as I'm aware and, and hence that uh, joining would, would be difficult and, and, and uh, impossible right now. 
Um, I was I was wandering around um, other um, umbrella organizations for say the, the organizations that have uh, that, that don't immediately see the the, the the financial resources available. There might be organizations such as Eric Forum that uh, were for for whom for, for which I don't know right now is that a legal is that a legal entity or not uh, that probably also might might be an additional angle. Um, to, no. to to facilitate. So no, okay. So no. Then, it's a grant. <laughs> yeah, but sorry, so, sorry. The, the research infrastructures are legal entities under the okay. Eric model. Okay, thanks. So thanks Alexia, uh, yeah. you know, all those can jo could join. Right. I think. Thanks, so, so so that so that issue remains. Um, the other the other I mean the other point I, I would like to um, discuss briefly was the the comment that was made earlier by I think by Jennifer um, um, saying that. Um, a lot of the the work that is done in cluster projects, including shock, um, is is out is seen to be outside of EOSC. Um, can you perhaps comment on this? Why is that? Um, I think we this is not the the, the vision of, of of the executive board or the governance board to see this uh, these this work being outside of EOSC. Is, is that did did I get that right? Je Jennifer, maybe you you could you could comment on this because I mean it's an essential piece of of the work in, in EOSC, and I think this it, it would be absolutely essential uh, to make sure that that this uh, that is seen like this, and and also remains an active piece of uh, of the future of the SRIA. Um, sure. I mean, I, I from my point of view, it is absolutely central. I mean, it is it is if if the EOSC is a cloud, this is the ladder that allows my community to to climb to that cloud. Um, so I, I, from, from our point of view in Daria as an Eric, um, the things that we're building in shock are essential enablers for the EOSC for our communities. However, um, we will build these things. We will maintain these things. We will take on the costs for sustaining, uh, things like the marketplace, things like the dataverse instance, things like the various tools and services, um, that we know are these enablers. Um, and I'm just not feeling that that in-kind contribution is being recognized uh, in the way uh, that we would like to, to see it. So, so again, um, perhaps I'm, I'm missing part of, the, uh, part of the discussion, but when you have this sort of flat fee and when you know, being a part of the association really is, it's, it's going to be key in terms of driving, the, um, driving the, 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 the strategic direction of the ESC. And I can see that very clearly and I recognize it's very important and I recognize that a central hub is necessary. But from a research infrastructure point of view, um, we can see that we need to, you know, we need to build the on ramps and the off ramps. Um, right. So, and we need to maintain those on ramps and off ramps. Right. And so, but, having but it, the same status um, is is slightly difficult as an argument to make. Yeah, but but it is also clear that that uh, being part of the the at the association is not uh, or not being part of the association does not exclude access to to the funding that comes uh, along through the through the work program right so i think i mean shaping this ria is is essential piece of uh, of of access and and being able to vote on on these different assets and and strategies that's that's clear um, but the funding is the funding is not is restricted to the association members i think this point needs to also be made uh, no, no, and I, I wouldn't necessarily expect. I would, I would hope that they wouldn't restrict funding to the association yeah. members. But obviously, the the European Commission will be looking to the association to help them develop the strategy and help them develop the the high level positioning around this. For so sure. I think we'd be naive to say that there will be no relationship sure. between sure. the voice that you have in the association and the direction that the EOSC takes. Absolutely. Yes, but perhaps we'll put Ron Decker here also on shock that. Uh, our aim is to to be part of 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 EOSC. So shock is this say you could say the social data and services part. And as Jennifer is saying, th th this project will end, and then it will be the standing organizations that take part in 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 shock that will carry on uh, and have these tools available like marketplace. Uh, Daria is is very exper experienced in in building this. Uh, we all have PID policy. So I think our contributions can be bigger and our membership should go beyond uh, being part of the work program or influence the EC work program. Our, our goal would be to, to realize EOSC. 
And that's more than just the SRIA or this EC work program for me. It, this, this is true, but at the same time, also in terms of sustainability, I mean, if, if you bring the argument that at some point the, the cluster projects will, will, run, will, will, be, will, be, uh, will conclude, I mean, it is, it is the, the, I think it is our duty to make sure that um, through the, the means that, that are currently available, and, and we have only the, the co-program partnership available as a, as a uh, funding model through the next, I mean, as one major funding model through the next seven years, um, that's, that, the, that the elements are, are realized and, and that, uh, that funding sources are explored um, through the, 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 the strategies in, in the SRIA uh, to make sure that, uh, that the EOS can grow and can build upon what has been established through the cluster projects and, and other oh, yeah. uh, important areas, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah, but what I mean is building on and working on the strategy is one, realizing a work program is two, but then you have to maintain all these tools and services. And one of the discussions we have in, in shock is whether we should uh, continue shock as a legal entity, uh, not only for the membership, uh, but also to, to keep all the tools and services up and running. Might be a good idea. Okay, so we are, uh, can, you, can, we, can we target now in the second point, in the second question, what are the benefits? So it's clear uh, that, the, that we have um, seen that there are problems to join in the, the, the partnership for some of the research infrastructures due to the fees. The, it is recognized that, it's, that there is an interest, a clear interest of joining um, EOSC uh, uh, Association and to be part of the partnership and to bring the needs and the, and the contribution of the research infrastructure to, to EOSC. But there are some difficulties in, on the side of the financial uh, uh, contribution. Uh, in the second question, what are the benefits? Shall we go directly or uh, for, for getting a bit uh, the, the financial issues? What are the benefits, the benefits for thematic uh, infrastructure organization jo uh, joining the EOSC uh, association? You see, do, do you see? Uh, what are the, the, the benefits you see? It is well understood what are the benefits that the that the joining the EOS association will bring to the research infrastructures. It is clear that the EOS infrastructure without the research infrastructures has no sense because the research infrastructure needs to, to contribute to the construction of EOS. But uh, um, from the point of view of the research infrastructure organization, what is your view? What is the, the benefits that you expect or will expect from EOSC? Uh, Ron Decker here from Shock, if I may. Yes, Ron. Um, yeah, it, it's in a, in a way it's economies of scale. We, we, we don't have all the knowledge, all the expertise that is needed to, to serve the researchers uh, with, with the research infrastructures. Uh, demand is shifting. And I think EOSC is, is a very good platform where we can bring together thematic uh, research infrastructures with, with the e-infrastructure. So uh, we, we can provide, together we can provide facilities for researchers to, to have access to sensitive data, to have storage, to have computing power, uh, this combination. What I also see, and that's already happening in the cluster projects and also between the clusters and can be further extended in EOSC, is cooperations over the domains. And if we would have a, a, a long-term platform where, can, where we can work on this cooperation, um, I, I see already social data and environmental data, social data and, and life uh, and health data. And I think we, we could get, EOS could be a catalyst for this type of cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. If, if, I, may add to, if I may add to this, this is Rupert. Um, I, I fully agree with, with the last point uh, Ron, uh, Ron raised. I think the, the cross domain fertilization and, and providing access to, um, to high quality data across the different scientific domains um, and that does not need, mean that, that we need to do uh, and incorporate access through all the different domains at the same time, but uh, certain domains 
um, as we have seen it, for instance, in the in the COVID-19 data uh, sharing platform, uh, where access to across different domains is already established and or is being built, and it's absolutely essential to tackle uh, some of the societal challenges. I think this is something that um, I see also from the own experience in uh, EMBL. Um, that this is that this is shaping the that this is helping to shape the <clears throat> the future of, uh, of of cross data access and EOSC will certainly play a big role and uh, if the research infrastructures um, play a, an essential role in in shaping the standards and the methods and the processes and uh, and the agreements um, and and also cater for sustainability around these things through the EOSC. Um, as, a, as a platform, I think that would be a benefit um, for all the different research infrastructures that I think can is, is, is very high on the agenda. At least this is the case for, for us in, in EMBL. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, more comments? I think it's important for S3 and for the uh, future development of uh, an involvement of research infrastructure to understand clearly if uh, the information that uh, is clear in the in the infrastructures, uh, that the benefits expected for joining the organization um, are clear for the for the infrastructure, that uh, you have the the tools in your hands to to put the question to the to choose your council in order to join uh, EOSC. Uh, is something that you have uh, discussed at cluster level because we have seen your position paper. But it's important to understand uh, your views on that. Could you share with us what are what is your views? Is the is EOS uh, an EOS association uh, something that you have discussed in your in your uh, organization? Is uh, something that deserve um, an special support uh, to ask for the participation to the association and to defend the position uh, in your councils or general assemblies? Some contribution for the infrastructures? I, I can start in yes, in, oh yeah. in Instruct, we have discussed the association within the data management and computational committee, which is chaired by um, Jose Maria Carazo in Spain. And uh, this was brought up and uh, the advantages uh, are clear and, I, and we think uh, the involvement of an, uh, infrastructures that they are so different to the to the to the ones that have the most the higher voice within EOSC will be very beneficial. I think in, in addition to the benefits of the association to us, I think the involvement of infrastructure just like ourselves and Eurobioimagen, IE Open Screen and EMBRC, the, that voice will be very beneficial to the association. However, we got stuck when uh, the, the topic of the financial uh, contribution came up. And I'm afraid at that point, uh, the, the conversation gets a bit stuck because you can have all the best intentions, but if you are not a rich organization, your voice can get lost. Then um, that, was, uh, that, that is where the discussion is in Instruct and, and the status and where we are. Ima, may I ask a question? Because we've now heard from several people that, that uh, the fees apparently are an issue. Uh, is it really so that 2,000 euro per year is such a large sum for these organizations? Uh, is there turnover then, let's say, less than 100,000? Uh, or what are we talking about? I mean, if you say we are poor or we have a small turnover or we don't uh, have the money, what, what turnover are we talking about? So and if I explain, I think there is a little bit of lack of an, uh, understanding of the financial model Could of well distributed research infrastructure. Most of the budget, which is important, is the setting up of electron microscope and synchrotron. The, the, the amount of funds they're talking about here is huge, but it's in kind. Countries don't send those funds centrally to Instruct. Uh, we, a diamond is used by Instruct and electron microscopes in Spain and in the Netherlands, in France. That amount of investment is, is considerable and is large, but the financial contribution 
that is for the running of the distributive infrastructure is, is, is small. And if we were talking 10,000, not 2,000, and if 2,000 to have a, a voice but not to have a vote, then this, this information uh, I didn't have, I just got it here, and I will bring it up to the committee, but it sounds a bit like you have to have money to have a place and not the level of expertise and of access that we provide to scientists all over Europe and internationally. Our financial model is not about huge amount of funds being sent from one place to another, but from our members' countries providing access to their facilities through okay. our, our, our system. Then, and this is not just instruct, this is a board of a general uh, model. Claudia, it's definitely not the intention uh, to make this exclusive for the richer organizations. So far, many of the umbrella organizations, and I understand that your distributed research infrastructure is also sort of an umbrella organization over the different locations. So many of the umbrella organizations have chosen for an observer membership uh, if they uh, came to uh, the association. Uh, and, and, and again, there the fee is much uh, smaller. Yeah, you, you do not have a voice in the General Assembly, but as I said, if you have a, a General Assembly of 100 or more uh, uh, organizations, th that one voice doesn't make a huge difference. You can still raise your voice during the General Assembly, say things, listen to things, have all the information. So we deliberately chose this observer membership as a way for the not so rich and the umbrella organizations to join. Let me give you a very simple example. Uh, EUA is an organization having more than 800 members uh, 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 representing most of the universities in some sort of way in Europe. They also chose, because they live from memberships fees themselves, to become an observer. The Guild choose the same thing. Leru choose the same thing. So these are rather powerful organizations, actually. Leru eh, has, has uh, uh, 23 uh, powerful research uh, universities on board, and they still choose to become an, an observer in the association. So uh, again, uh, is 2,000 euro uh, insurmountable? Is that, is that really uh, a problematic figure? Should we, should we look for organizations to go lower than 2,000 euro? I think the flat rate, it, it, considering, as you said, that an organization that has 20 of the, most, of the richest universities in the world pay the same the, uh, than a, a very small uh, organization. The flat rate is really difficult to understand. But they only have one voice also as a result of that. So there is in the statutes a possibility to differentiate the rates. We didn't start with that, and I don't think we should start with that, as was in the chat earlier uh, uh, from the general session. Uh, the, the, the advantage of a flat rate is that everybody has the same voice, also the small communities, also, also the social sciences and humanities. And there has been a lot of pressure, especially from the e-infrastructures, to sort of dominate the whole system because they tend to be very rich based on what they have obtained as money from the past uh, and in the present. Uh, so we would like to, uh, exactly what you're aiming for, to have uh, all the organizations and all the sciences on board. If I may, we need to, to conclude. I will conclude with telling that I think that uh, the, the, the member states and associate countries has also uh, necessary here. I think that the council and the general assemblies are composed by the representative of member states and associate uh, countries. We need to create this uh, awareness of the need to be part of the EOSC. If, uh, if EOSC is not uh, gathering all the, all the, all the organizations that have something to to, to, to apport or to, 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 for EOSC, we are going to create a, a weak EOSC and this is not the purpose. The purpose is to create something that has another value for all of that. Uh, electronic uh, infrastructures, uh, research infrastructures, processing uh, research organization, uh, performing organization. And uh, in this sense, I think that the research infrastructure needs to be there. Uh, they are they, they are uh, the organization that are, are the, the offering data, high quality data, and uh, and it's uh, and, uh, and they are needed. 
And uh, we need to find a way that the RSS infrastructure could join the association in one way or another. So I also think that we need to create this awareness at the member state side in order not uh, that, that the decisions to join the organization is not something request uh, uh, only from the management of, of the organization, but uh, with the member states that are composed in the council. Uh, so with this, I think that we conclude. Uh, Lorenza, I don't know if you want to share your screen to gather in the, the conclusion of the meetings in order to see uh, between all of us what are the conclusions that we are going to, to, to bring to the open session. Have you had the opportunity to, to fill the, the conclusion uh, slide? Lorenza? Okay, I, I am muted, sorry, I was uh, muting. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, I'm, I think, okay, it's clear that we didn't get a clear answer to our question, but there has been a very interesting uh, discussion uh, uh, on uh, the, the needs of research infrastructure to join uh, the, the association. I think there, there are not so many concern on the governing structure, but on the fact how to join this governing structure. Uh, and here, apparently, the fee can, uh, can be a bigger uh, obstacle for some um, of the research infrastructure. Um, there were also some consideration if the contribution of that some of this infrastructure uh, gives to the 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 EOS could be considered a contribution in kind, but this has just appeared a little bit in um, in uh, in some um, in some question and has been mentioned as uh, within the the, the 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 contribution of the cluster that are indeed are creating some uh, um, some tools and some um, um, contribution to the to the EOSC uh, that is inter uh, cross uh, uh, research infrastructure, but then the sustainability will have to be anyway ensured by the research infrastructure itself, because apparently it's not clear how the uh, EOSC can maintain uh, uh, this uh, this output of of the cluster. So here there is uh, some concern uh, how to. Um, to maintain the, 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 the output of the class and if in case this could be considered a kind of contribution in kind to, to, to the DOSC. And then we passed the, to the to the question on benefit. And here it's clear that the, the, the biggest benefit that has been seen is the interdisciplinary. Uh, the cross-domain uh, uh, collaboration, uh, the cross-domain access, uh, and this also has, uh, has some impact on the development by research infrastructure and, uh, um, and diffusion of standards, and uh, um, also on uh, an increased sustainability of research infrastructure because in some way they uh, they they have more impact, uh, giving more uh, uh, more ensuring more use of their uh, their output. I don't know if uh, if someone else can want to add some some more things. I am writing. I don't know if you you are looking my no you are yes. So uh, as a very conclusion, then uh, I think that there is a clear interest uh, of the research infrastructure to join the association, although there are th still certain lack of information. Yeah, yes, in this yes, sense, yes, you're right. Uh, you know, in this sense, the observer um, membership, observer the membership, fee, yes, the fee membership well, fee no, can, no. Can, can represent an obstacle. It Could was, you make it was, bigger because it's, it's very small? It's very, ah, the, the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. The conclusion, the main conclusion is that there are financial difficulties, especially mm -hmm. for those small uh, uh, research infrastructures, and especially for those infrastructures that are not data intensive infrastructure, research infrastructure, that are more analytical. Experimental um, facilities, yes. Uh, it was, mm, 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 mm. 
one possibility is to try to see the option to join through the clusters, but it is not clear because uh, no, are they are not legal entities. Generally, through cluster, but uh, not feasible <laughs> so far. Unless, uh, as Ron said, they want to create some legal entity, but this could add the uh, level of, of over level. Of... And uh, so three third conclusion, it is that it is recognized that uh, one of the biggest benefits benefits is the as you mentioned, the cross-domain collaboration, collaboration and access. And, the and, and in this, uh, the OSC act as a catalyzer, indeed, the OSC as a catalyzer of cross-collaboration uh, and access. So It's worth mentioning that it's not just a uh, shock that's considering legal st status. It's the same for the ENRI group. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think, uh, I know at the moment it's not legal status, but certainly this is not necessarily a barrier because it's being considered in many places. Okay. I guess you will go for a light organization, not an Eric over Eric. But oh, absolutely. <laughs> it will be okay. as, as, as absolutely simple as no. possible <laughs> okay. just to be able to participate in these sort of things. Uh, I think. Okay, yes. Okay. Very light, not an Eric. Uh, <laughs> okay. oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> okay. We can okay. then. Uh, that uh, through is cluster, or, so we can say possible solution to join the true cluster or uh, and slash association or some things like that. So, okay. Do you want to mention especially the social science? No, I think we can put as a general uh, issue. Okay. Do you think this is a good uh, summary of the discussion? Uh, Ima, yes. I want to reiterate that if you are a distributed research infrastructure, you can also stimulate your distributed organizations to different universities to become a member and then through that uh, participate. So it's, it's not only that you have to have a legal entity or that you have to go through the clusters. Don't forget about all your members in your research infrastructure. Then so I think yeah, it's uh, sometimes cluster light association or nodes, no? Yeah. Or nodes, yes. Yeah. Light association yeah. or oh, nodes, perfect. Just... All these nodes are, are a legal entity. They can become a member. There is nodes. And okay. uh, the voice of five nodes is more powerful than the voice of one research infrastructure. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but sometimes the nodes are uh, multi multidisciplinary institution, for example, CNRS or this kind of things. So then you don't, you never know which uh, which community and which research infrastructure they represent. Thank, thank you for bringing that up because uh, the the thought that the Eastrack voice will be heard through the University of Oxford through Leru is a <laughs> is a bit of a long shot. Uh, I, thank you. No, I can put this also. The other conclusion is to ri rise. Rise is not well described. Rise. I don't know how it's. It's like this so or that. Like, raise conclusion. Raise, raise awareness on member states and also the country for facilitating no the the the, the, the decision making at the uh, research infrastructures. I'm sorry, uh, Inma. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry, the room will have to close right now. Okay. So. Please, everyone, uh, remain here. Do not uh, leave the meeting. You will be automatically transferred to the plenary. Thank you very much. So this one is uh, is okay. Conclusion four. By the way, if your universities are not paying attention to social sciences and humanities, then there is a problem. But then there is a problem within those universities. Uh, Th that cannot be solved by uh, EOSC. I I'm a little bit astonished about this, that, that those universities don't pay attention to those disciplines and to those notes. If they are a member of a research infrastructure, I would expect them to pay attention to that. They pay a contribution. I'm, I'm really flabbergasted here. Okay. 